Shadwick, Ohio, population 10,000. Doesn't seem like the sort of place in which one would expect to meet an Italian countess. But the Countess Ferrelli was born here. And as our story opens, she's returning. There weren't many of the townspeople at the railroad station to meet her, because there weren't many people left in the small town who really ever knew her or remembered. But Jim Goodwin remembered the Countess Ferrelli, remembered her summer promise of many years ago. Now, after 30 years, she was coming home once more. As we waited, time pulled at my sleeve, drew me back to that long gone year when I was very young, that spring of the Countess's first homecoming. Thank you, Lisa. Good night. Good night, sir. Countess Ferrelli. Who may I see his call? Never mind about that. I'm going to see her. Who is it, Lisa? I don't know, madame. I'm James Goodwin. My father's Harvey Goodwin. Why, of course. You're Harvey's son. How nice of you to drop by. Your father just this moment left. Perhaps we could... I saw him leave. I want to talk to you. Of course. Come this way. There's a fire. It'll be more comfortable. Oh, that good wind, Jim. I'd have recognized it anywhere. Solid granite. Oh, I'm afraid your father and I have been behaving most illegally. This prohibition of yours, it's, it's very confusing when you've just come from Europe, but uh, we found a bottle of wine in the cellar. Very old, but rather good. Would you care for a glass? Why don't you leave him alone? Why did you ever come back here? You know, if my mother ever found out what was going on, you know what would kill her? Are you out of your mind? Oh, that's fine. That's great. It's just a big joke to a sophisticated lady like you. Oh, my poor foolish boy. I'm sorry I shouldn't laugh, but the thought of you lurking out there in the dark, spying on your father and me. We thought we were being devilish enough just breaking the 18th Amendment. All right. Let me ease that little mind of yours. I haven't been in love with your father since I was 16. Last week, when I returned from Europe, I engaged your father to handle the estate of my late husband. And for that, he gets a very decent fee paid quarterly. And tonight, he came here to discuss the sale of some business property in Milan. And that's it. The defense rests. Business matters. At this time of night, and you dressed like that. You asked me a question before. You asked me why I came back here. I grew nostalgic for the warmth of the town I grew up in, but I forgot the other elements of small town life, suspicion, intolerance. Good night, Mr. Goodwin. All right, I'll go. Just leave my father alone. Good morning. I'd like to see the Countess. She's not in any mood for you, sir. Well, maybe not, but she'll want these papers. No, I'm to give them to her. Very well. She's in the study. We're there. Thank you. My father wanted you to have these papers right away. Couldn't your father have found another messenger? Would have been less embarrassing for both of us. Well, I asked to bring them here. I wanted to come here. Did you? I, I wanted you to know that I know I made a fool of myself last night, and I'm sorry for what I said, and I'm sorry for what I thought. Tell your father I'll look over the papers and return them this afternoon. I know I was wrong, and I hope you won't tell my father. When did you change your mind about me? When I saw the 
kind of person you were, I began getting very unsure of myself. And why did you storm out of here? Well, I came in, man. I thought I might as well go out the same way. <laughs> How very masculine of you. All right. You may leave me my homework. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to stay until you've signed them. It'll save you the trip. Well, it really isn't necessary, but if, if you'd like to make yourself comfortable, I never could understand what these things say. Thank you. Is this you as a kid? Yes, and no funny remarks. The picture speaks for itself. Who's this? That's my Uncle Fred. He was a wonderful man. Oh. Who's this? That was my husband, Count Ferrelli. Your husband? Very distinguished looking man. Very distinguished. Yes. And he was years older than I. Oh, look, I didn't mean anything by it. It doesn't matter what you meant. He was a fine man. He was. Are you mad at me again? Oh, no, of course not. Well, last night you offered me a glass of wine. Yeah? Well, you were to offer me a glass this morning, I'd drink it. Oh, my dear young friend, even a countess from Ohio does not drink wine at ten in the morning. Wine is for the evening, with music. You see what a hick I am? I have an idea. If you've nothing better to do, why don't you drop in this evening and we shall have a glass? I'd like that very much. About what time? Oh, about nine. I'm glad we decided to like each other. So am I. Well, I'll be getting these back now. Goodbye. Oh, bring your girl with you. You do have a girl, don't you? Of course I have. Ann Davis. We're having an engagement party next month. Then be sure to bring her. All right. Thank you. was lovely. I made some mistakes. You no, know, you're the most curious young man. Last night you were a, a furious, accusing Puritan, and tonight you're well... <laughs> Where did you ever learn to play Chopin? Chopin managed a girl as far as Ohio. Ooh, that's telling the lady off. Oh, it's so wonderful being here tonight. <laughs> I only wish that Miss Davis could have been with us. I'm sure disappointed. When the flu bug bites you, well... Tell me about Anne. She's very nice. Tell me about Europe. Very nice. <laughs> no, no, I mean it. Oh, there's so many things I want to do. Everybody wants me to settle down. Dad wants me to go into the law business. Mother wants me to get married. Roots. Who wants roots? You know, sometimes I just want to take hold of the world and tear up big chunks. Take Paris. I'll bet you've been there a dozen times. Hmm, I've seen quite a lot of Paris. What's it like? Oh, it's more beautiful than any pictures I've ever seen of it. It, it seems to sparkle, not just after a rain, but the, the grass and the trees and the bois and, and the people, too. It... <laughs> You can see I, I'm rather fond of Paris. Yes. See, wouldn't it be great just to throw everything you own into a couple of suitcases and 
take off for any place. France, England, Italy. You must have liked Italy best of all. You lived there a long time. Oh, don't get me started on Italy. I'd be crying like a lost child before we even reached the outskirts of Florence. Why did you leave it all? Why did you come back here? Because this has its charm, too, and the urge to come home again gets fairly strong sometimes. The, the idea of belonging somewhere. Well, whatever brought you here. Well, I'm all for it. Thank you. You know, you're different from anyone I've ever known. Oh, you're beautiful. Of course you're beautiful. That, that's not what I mean. You're mysterious and far away. Oh, no, that's not what I mean either. Well, you even smell different than other women. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Something I've got to tell you. What? Oh. Anne doesn't have the flu. She's healthy as a horse. But then why didn't she? She didn't come because I didn't invite her. Shall I go? I think so. All right. You forgive me? I suppose so. <laughs> May I see you again? Like tomorrow? Well, I don't know. I have so many things to do. Call me. That's what I do. I'll call you tomorrow. Thanks for a wonderful evening. I will thank you for the concert. I won't ask you so many questions next time. Oh, that's all right. You reminded me of pleasant things. Au revoir. Au revoir. I told you you could finish it off. <laughs> so I'm able to keep another childhood illusion. Mr. Ferguson's lemon ice cream is as magnificent as I remember. Oh, those ladies over there find this most interesting. The Hopkins girls? Don't mind them. Oh, I don't. I've been under inspection ever since I got back. I expected that, but... Oh, my dear young man. I'm afraid we've set the tongues wagging. Everyone in town, they're all wondering about us and watching us. So, let them watch. See, when you were a kid, did your folks ever take you out to Weaver's Hill on a picnic? Oh, every 4th of July. Well, it's nowhere near the 4th now, but what about tomorrow? Ah, mm. oh, come on, Irene, say yes. Weaver's Hill? I'd adore it. Good. Oh, no, I don't suppose it will. By the way, where's Anne these days? Is she out of town on a holiday? She's around. Oh, not the flu again. <laughs> when do you ever see her? I see her sometimes. Oh, well, I know it's none of my business, but... Oh, I'm sorry, Gemma, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, this is... This has been such a wonderful homecoming. I owe you so much. Oh, me? Oh, for showing me my own town as I'd almost forgotten it. You've sort of helped me, well, find my way home again. I shan't forget that. You sound as though you were trying to say goodbye. You're not, are you? Oh, not for a while. And anyway... What woman would turn her back on such gallantry? G gallantry? Me? Oh, yes, you, Jim. You sweetly pretend that there's no difference in the years between us, and sometimes you almost succeed in making me believe it, even though I know it's not so. When you're older, you'll know what a nice feeling that is. Irene, I've been wanting to tell you something all afternoon. What? I'm not going to go back to college this fall. I'm going to get a job instead. I know, the folks will go right through the roof, but I made up my mind. 
I, I'm going to be on my own, making my own living and doing what I want. Oh, Jim, that sounds very convincing, but you better be sure you know what you want. I am sure. Morning. You woke us up last night coming in. It was pretty late. I'm sorry. Where were you that time of night? What did you say? I said, what were you doing out so late? It was over at Irene's. Oh, so it's Irene now, is it? Don't you think it would be more becoming to call her Countess Forelli? She asked me to call her Irene. You've been seeing a lot of her lately, haven't you? Yes. Okay, it's all yours. Not so fast. I want to talk to you. Talk about what? I want you to stop seeing her. Why? You know why. You've got eyes and ears. People are talking about you, both of you. And what they're saying isn't very pretty. I don't care what they're saying. You've got to care. Remember, Chadwick is a small town and you have to live in it. So do I and your mother. Anyway, you'll be going back to college soon, so break it off now. All right, I was going to tell you this. I'm not going back to college next fall, and I'm going to keep seeing Irene as much as she'll let me. Have you lost your mind? She's 15 years older than you are. Now listen to me, young you man. You wouldn't be trying to break Irene and me up for personal reasons, would you? Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Dad, can you forget what I just said? It uh, sucked me again, only harder. Sorry. It's already forgotten. Now, will you forget Irene? I'm sorry, Dad. I can't do that. But what about Anne? Have you thought about her? You're supposed to be having an engagement party in a few weeks. Anne and your mother are busy night and day planning for the party. Anne loves you. She thinks you're going to marry her. Or doesn't that matter to you? It's not that. Miss Anne Davis is here to see you. Miss Anne Davis? Yes. Show her in. Miss Davis. Oh, Miss Davis. How nice of you to drop by. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I can only stay a moment or so. I have so much to do. It's just that... Well, I felt this was something that shouldn't be done over the phone or through the mail. I mean, since we've never met. Yes? Well, you know Mr. Goodwin, the lawyer? Well, his son Jimmy and I, we're getting married in late January, you know, and well, we'd be so honored, both of us, if, if you could come to our engagement party a week from next Sunday. I'm not one for grand social affairs, especially engagement parties, but, well, Jimmy's folks practically insist on it. And Jimmy says that everyone's been expecting us to get married since he was six and I was four, so, well, they might as well all come on over and see it's finally happening. So, well, if Jimmy wants the party, well, I've always wanted what Jimmy wants, and I guess I always will. So, if you could come, I mean, the famous Countess Varelli, well, he would add such distinction and... It's very kind of you to ask me. Then I can put your name down on the list? We can expect you? I'm afraid not. You said the party was a week from Sunday? Yes. I shall be leaving town much before then. But I hope you'll both be very happy and... Love him always as deeply as you love him now. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, thank you very much.
What are you doing? Oh, hello, Jimmy. I'm glad you came by. What is this? I'm leaving for Europe. Just like that? Just like that. Nothing to it. Now you see her, now you don't. Well, you can. Oh, please, Jimmy, don't. Irene, I know you're older than I am, and I know people make jokes about that, but locking up a steamer trunk and saying, so long, kid, it's been nice knowing you, well, that doesn't make everything okay. Please believe me, Jimmy, this is the only way. Who said so? You did, among others. I did. That second day when you came here, we're looking at the pictures. I shall never forget the expression on your face when you lent this elderly gentleman has been my husband. I loved him. And I respect him. And because he was an important man, nobody ever laughed. At least, not out loud. But you can't build a bridge over the years, no matter how hard you try. No matter how hard I wanted to. I never belonged to him, not truly, not completely. We're all prisoners of our own time, and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't believe that. No. Take the word of an expert. I'm vain enough to hope that you won't forget me too soon, but you'll see. Maybe sooner than you think. You'll look at Anne, and she'll be young and lovely and bubbling with youth, and then you'll wonder how you ever could have thought of giving her up. Jimmy, don't leave like that. Can't we even say goodbye? Goodbye? Arrivederci. Irene. What am I going to do? Stay, please. You make it seem so simple. It's exactly that simple. You actually make it sound possible. But it is possible. Oh, Jimmy, I, I have to think. Give me time to think. You could come to dinner, and Lisa could find another bottle of wine, and you could play the piano, and explain again how simple everything is. Then I will see you again. You'll see me again. And so, once again, the Countess Forelli was coming home. Anne and I were just about the only ones there to greet her. And as we waited, my thoughts, and I suspect Anne's too, turned back to that other homecoming, to that small island in time when a wise and beautiful lady broke my heart for a little while. Now she had returned keeping a promise she had made so many years ago. A promise that I would see her again. The Countess Ferrelli had come home again. And this time, she would stay.